what is the true meaning of jihad? Can you can Sheikh please give a specific definition of jihad and what is the main difference of jihad during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the jihad in our time? Thank you. This requires a lecture. <laughs> but in short, jihad linguistically is to struggle and technically it is to fight for the cause of Allah. The Prophet said والسلام, to the person who asked him, O Prophet of Allah, a man fights for the booty, for the money. A man fights for fame. A man fights because his kinship were attacked, so he's fighting with them. Who's among them is in jihad for sabilillah. He said, whoever fights so that Allah's uh, uh, word is the highest. So this is jihad, when you fight for the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal. However, jihad can be categorized in five things. Jihad of shaitan, when you struggle, when you fight shaitan, this is jihad. Jihad of your own soul. And sometimes they're both interlinked. Then you have jihad of the disbelievers, the kuffar, mushrikeen, enemies of Islam. And then you have the jihad of the hypocrites who are claiming to be Muslims, but they're fighting and undermining Islam. And finally, you have the jihad of the sinners, Muslims, but they're sinners. You have to jihad and, and strive, not kill them. See, jihad is not only killing. It can be done by words. Allah Azza wa says about the Quran and wajahidhum bihi. And you have to have jihad with the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ used to encourage jihad by words, like Hassan ibn Thabit. He was the poet of the Prophet ﷺ, and he used to criticize the mushrikeen with po poems. And it was much, much more harder on them than swords. Because people would circulate, oh, they said so-and-so about your family. They said so-and-so about your uh, uh, fear and being coward and running away from battle. And all the Arabs would talk about it. So poetry at the time was like CNN, was like, you know, news uh, uh, agencies. So these are five types of jihad that we make. And the jihad technically is divided into two types. In Arabic, they call jihad al-dafa, and the second is jihad al-talab. Jihad al-dafa is what everyone agrees upon, which is the jihad based on defense. So when someone attacks you, you dafa. Dafa, you find it in the doors, idfa, meaning push. So someone attacks your country, attacks your family, what do you do? It's legitimate, even the kuffar say you can do it. That is to defend yourself. This was found at the time of the Prophet and it's found until today. The other type of jihad is the one that everyone trying to hide. And it's called jihad al-talab. And this means that the jihad of pursuing, running after. And this jihad was at the time of the Prophet But this jihad cannot be accomplished, cannot take place unless the state of the Muslims is strong. If you don't have a strong Muslim country, who can they pursue or attack? No, 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 stay where you are. Just try to uh, uh, fix yourself, uh, enrich your people with Islamic knowledge and Iman, then you can go. And what is the reason behind such jihad? Number one, to call them to Islam. It is for da'wah. The jihad is only for da'wah. That is why when Muslims go and conquer the, the adjacent country, what do we do? We kill them all? No. The Prophet says, the first thing you do is call them to Islam. If they accept it, leave them. Khalas, they're Muslims. We go. We don't want your country. We don't want your uh, uh, land. We don't want your wealth. If they refuse, then tell them Allah obliged upon you to pay taxation, jizya. Stay 
Kafir as you wish, no problem. But you have to give us a percentage. And this percentage, by the way, is, giving, is given once or twice a year, if, uh, uh, depending on the rules. And it's less or equivalent to zakat, your own zakat. And by the way, jizya is not taken from women. You, don't, you didn't know this, did you? So I'm teaching you new things, mashallah. Sheikh scholar is a very big scholar. <laughs> Anyhow, jizya is not taken from women. It's not taken from children. It's taken only from men who work and can produce. So they, we take jizya. And in return, when enemy comes and attack your country, you don't fight. We Muslims protect you. Subhanallah, for this little money, yes. And you enjoy sitting in your homes and in your country and live your life normally. But the ruling is for Sharia. So you do not open nightclubs, you do not uh, fornicate in the streets, you do not... No, Sharia rules. But you live your life, you marry, you have children, you enjoy your life. But publicly, Islam rules. If they refuse, then we have to fight. And if we fight you, then we capture you, you become our slaves, and we take your land, and you take where... Because you refuse, I give you two good options. This is the strength of Islam. But nowadays, forget this, maybe in the, in the coming 40, 50 years when the Muslims become strong, as they're supposed to be, and they are focused and Islamically oriented. Now we're not Islamically oriented. We are money oriented. We want to live comfortably have a good car, have a good house, have a good salary, and let everybody else die. I don't care.